From Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. God damn it's good. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind. On the radio talk program, we're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I've given this a little time. I uh, put it on the side for a while. I, uh, I it's, a, it's a segment of the program I just love doing. I enjoy the hell out of it. And... Um, Every once in a while, I give it a rest, and then I come back to it with both guns blazing. And in this segment of the program, um, it's it's time. It's time to let off a little steam. It's time to let off a little steam. It's time to talk to the people, men and women, who absolutely hate me. Hate the show. Hate what we stand for. Hate our callers. Hate the concept. Hate the influence we have. And I know you're out there because you write nasty emails to me. Many of you uh, attempt to threaten me or scare me. Some of you just write vulgar passages to me. And uh, I really don't care why you're angry at me, what causes it. I really don't care. I just know you're out there. There are women who hate me and say that I'm a misogynist. There are women who've never looked up the word misogynist in the dictionary, but they use it anyway. (laughs) Same thing with the word chauvinist. Many of you. There are men who hate me, uh either because they feel competitive with me, they don't like the fact that I talk about having wealth, or because they are religious somehow and they resent the fact that I am an atheist. There are some people that I just make angry. In fact, there are some people just get angry hearing the sound of my voice. And you realize there are people tuning in right now who just because they can hear me are angry at the very presence of my voice in their car. Or wherever they might be listening. If that's you, I want to talk to you because I'm the only radio personality who has the big brass balls to spend an hour talking to nothing but my detractors. You know, lots of shows say they put all the haters up front, but then they end up talking to just a parade of sycophants who call it, Rush, I love you, Rush. Make a ditto, Rush. I love everything you say, Rush. And and most radio programs like that, it's not just Rush Limbaugh, it's all of them. Love your show, listen all the time, agree with everything you say. Well, we we get a certain number of people like that, but how many of these radio personalities are willing to put their money where their mouth is and talk to people who truly, truly hate them? Now, if that's you, if you truly hate me, hate the show, hate what we stand for, hate our callers, hate fans of the show, call right now. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Now, keep in mind that uh, when we do this feature, as you would expect, many of our biggest fans, many of our sick fans do call in and try to get on the air to defend me or 
to say they love to hate me or hate to love me or they're big fans. Hey, we appreciate all of that. But that's really not what we're looking for this hour. This hour, we are looking for people who absolutely hate my guts. You may have to call a friend of yours and tell him to tune in or tell her to tune in or tell her to call in. So Dean, because so many fans are calling in, Dean cleans out the phone lines. I mean, he literally has to hang up on hundreds of people to get to the 20 or so people who will get on the air with me this hour. So there is a phone line available to you. Don't use that as the excuse not to call in. Because no matter how many callers call in, Dean has to hang up on over 95% of the people who call this hour. And that frees up a phone line for you. Call this telephone number, 1-800-5800-TOM. In fact, if you've been trying to get through to tell me how much you hate me, I guarantee, I guarantee that you will now get through. We now have 33% more telephone lines than we used to. We've got plenty of people um, who uh, try to get in and then Dean hangs up on them. And that frees up phone lines for people like you who truly do hate me. So if that's you, but you have to call right now, okay, because as the hour progresses, you will not be able to get in. But at the very beginning, this is the best time to call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. But you have to hate my guts. I mean, you have to hate me with a vengeance. I mean, I have to really, really, really piss you off. If it's mild dislike or occasional disagreement, that's not enough. I'm talking bile, I'm talking venom, I'm talking anger, okay? You put your fist through a speaker, put your fist through a wall, you've wanted to put your fist through my teeth. That's the kind of hatred we're talking about here. If that's you, call me at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Now, let's start this off with Karen on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Tom, my problem with you is that you have no respect for women. You say you're not a misogynist, and I do know the meaning of the word, um, but you are. You, you say you have one woman friend. I, I would love to find out what kind of a friendship you have with this woman because you, you don't like to have conversations. You don't want to have any kind of intelligent discussion. So wait, 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 wait. Stop right there. I don't want to have intelligent conversations with people. With a woman. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, yeah, but you haven't heard the whole, no, but you, you've only heard half of what I've said. Okay. I don't want to have an intelligent conversation with someone I'm dating. Okay. Okay, but, but why, the reason would you have to, to speak with a woman if you're not dating her? Well, as I said, uh, if you were listening the day I revealed that I have one female friend who slipped through the cracks, this is somebody who once had a radio show who uh, contacted me because she wanted me to help her find radio work. Okay. And I have, because when I was a kid, I had a certain number of people who reached out to me and helped me uh, learn about the broadcasting business. I, in turn, as an adult, do the same thing for people now. Most of them are men because most people on the air are men. But occasionally there is a woman who who likes what I do, appreciates what I do, appreciates what I bring to the party, and asks me for this kind of help, and I give it. The kind of help that – what are you saying? What kind of help are you giving her to help you uh, on a radio con, show? Well, how to do a radio it's show. to your ego, and that's the, that's the reason that no, you're – No, 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 dear, dear uh, I also do it for men. In fact, I mostly do it for men. Well, of course you do, because you have no respect for women. No, actually, the reason is, listen to the radio. Most of the people on the radio are men. I listen and I get furious, but... Most what, of the people... Dear, the, dear, 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 you have your own agenda here. Most of the people on the radio are men. Most of the people who want to be in radio are men. And so most of the people I help are men. There have been women... And one of the women that I have agreed to help became a friend of mine over time. Okay, so she's ugly and she's fat, right? Because no attractive woman would have a job and take care of herself. I will just say that she is not my type and I'm probably not okay. her type. Okay, Cause, because that's the other part that really fascinates me, um, that, you, that you say that, that no woman that's attractive would need to have a job because a man would take care of her. Oh, uh, that's um, Well, yes, that's true. You, you believe that? Yes. So, so okay. What about all these gorgeous actresses? Why? I mean, they're they're making tons of money. I mean, they're they're 
totally successful well, and they don't need a man to take care of This them. is a microscopic fraction of, of the total uh, female population. Uh, I mean, there are 175 million women in this country. How many are successful actresses? Okay. But you know what? But prior to, um, as you can hear, I have a child in the background. I, I actually um, was a successful um, you know, woman um, working in the in the actually construction business, and I'm I'm somewhat attractive. I don't I don't think I'm you know like a whatever you're nine or ten. I'm I'm short, so I think that puts me out right there. But um, the point is, I and you have stretch marks. Part of me. And you have stretch marks. Um, actually, I don't have stretch marks. I have great skin. But the point is, veins um, popping out. Part of me. You got veins popping out or something from from having no, babies. Oh, actually, sure you do. No, I I, I don't. But the, the the funny thing about you, Tom, is that well, I find I find two things really interesting. Um, to me, being a mother actually has, has given me a lot of perspective. Probably something you don't have a lot of. Oh. But no, but they, we'll, 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 I'll be the judge if you have perspective or not. But what it, what it has done is actually made me look at future generations, which I, I think that we don't do enough. And I think that's the thing that you. The thing that bugs me the most about you is that you actually are a detriment to the future generations because you are anti-family and anti-having kids. They are the next generation, and these men that you there are... There are plenty, uh, by the way, dear, there are plenty of stupid and poor people who will breed incessantly. You and don't have to worry. They are taking care. The they're getting the job done. Breeding. I mean, that's idiotic. You're, you're it is breeding. Even- no, nothing you're saying is making any sense. Of course it's making sense. Stupid people to, to breed. I mean, my God, they shouldn't be parents in the first place. It's the intelligent well, that's, people who do that you think? be parents. Why does that, what does that tell you, though? If the stupid people are having most of the kids, what does that tell you about having kids? I don't think that I don't think the stupid people are having most of the kids. But oh, sure they are. What you're trying to do is... The poor and the dumb. The I have lots of wonderful, amazingly intelligent friends, but I think you're you're creating this this environment that that is completely against that. And not to mention telling men not to date a, a single mother uh, or yes, you know, this is terrible. Why? Who needs that hassle? Who needs the baggage? The baggage. This baggage from every relationship you've ever been in. No, but this baggage costs money, time. Listen to what it sounds like in the background. How could anybody live with that soundtrack all the time? the time it just happens to be because i'm not paying attention to her and i'm well that's my point if you're not paying attention to the kids this is what it sounds like so if you try to pay attention to a boyfriend a husband this is what it sounds like it sounds like this about 18 hours a day that's what your life sounds like it is not actually and when it isn't that it's the soundtrack of shrek 2 or the little mermaid uh because we're not there yet but um you know tom i i but you'll get there I, I may get there, but you know what? I'm, I'm enjoying every second of it. And luckily, I have a yeah, husband what, that also... Yeah, well, well, well again, though, it, why, why would a man want to date somebody where that's the soundtrack? But you know what? I mean, if, if a guy likes kids, then what's the problem? You know, I mean, I think I think you're looking at it from your perspective of what you like. I mean, clearly you don't like children. And that's yeah, that's not true. I have, a, I have a six and a half year old nephew who I absolutely adore. I think he's fantastic. I just spoke to him on the phone today, as a matter of fact, and I think he's great. Um, I've got no problem with children. What I have a problem with is having them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah, which is, I mean, you know what's funny is if you had one, you'd love it, but... No, I I, I wouldn't. I think you would, but... Here's what I love, dear. Here's what I love. I just put down a $40,000 deposit on a trip to Tuscany, where I am going to go. I will not hear that sound you're hearing right now. I'm not going to hear it for 16 days. Instead, I'm going to hear the sound of grapes being crushed, the sound of olives being picked, uh, the sounds of glasses the sound clinking. of your voice, which is your favorite thing, right? The sound of my voice definitely is my favorite thing. There's no doubt about it. Because that's why I have all that money. It's the sound of my voice that does it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, 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 so like, while you're busy I, I watching watch Teletubbies, just... while you're busy watching Teletubbies at home and uh, and uh, sitting there with that screaming uh, uh, noise in the background, I am going to be traveling <laughs> from winery to winery, looking at beautiful 15th century castles. And that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be sitting there with in whatever suburb you're in, whatever tract home you're in, with that baby screaming in the background. Do not live in a tract home. But, Tom, we actually do lots of traveling, and she's great, typically. I'm sure you do. Walt Disney World. Walt Walt is the uh, land. The She's screaming, but what I actually want to talk to you about, Tom, is Knott's Berry Farm. Really interesting about um, your show. Legoland. You say all the time. Plenty of traveling. You, you say that um, you actually, um, women only date you 
Right, because you have money and um, money, yeah, power, you, or fame. You, you spend no money on them, so why are they with because you? Because women think they can change men, and they think they're going to get a piece of the pie, which then they never do. Okay, so so you don't buy them any dinner, but they're still having sex with you every night. I don't uh, no. Here's what I have. I have a bullpen. Uh, they don't see me every night. They get limited okay. access, and because they get limited access, they want it more. If you let a woman see you every night, eventually she starts making demands. So I don't let them see me every night. Okay. So okay. So you don't let them see you every night, and you, so I, mean, I get laid. Not, I can get laid. I can. So understand. This is how. This is how you get laid. This is how you get laid every night without having to pay for it. You have one on Monday, a different one on Tuesday, a different one on Wednesday. Okay. Each one waits their turn in the rotation, so none of them gets overly confident and believes they can start stamping their little feet and making scenes. Oh right, right. Of course, that's true. If you they ever so get tired, if they ever get tired of it, what do I care? I already got you, what, what I wanted. Care, I already got what I wanted, and I move on to the next victim. Right. Yeah, because it's amazing. I've never actually seen a picture of you, but I'm just imagining from how you are. Yeah, you finished. said that already. You, you said it already. How many times are you going to say the same thing? Because I just I wonder. Well, you're not going to be allowed to repeat it a hundred times. You said it. Uh, okay, you had the opportunity to say it, right. and there's okay, no need to keep repeating the same thing. You know what? I still think Howard is funnier and smarter than you. Well, that's so great. Have a good day, and take care of yourself. Well, you sure taught me a lesson. Tom. 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 One eight hundred. Five eight hundred. Tom. 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 Oh man, it is good to hear your voice. Yes, I know. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. The one radio program where we've got the big brass balls to talk to the people who hate us the most. If that's you, call right now, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. If it's busy, keep trying because Dean is hanging up on people left and right. Thank you to all the people calling in to support me. But this is not your hour. It's the hour for the haters. And that's all we want of the haters this hour. 1-800-5800-866. Sandra, hello. Hello there, Tom. Yes. Well, I guess this is radio, so I have to pretend that you haven't seen the teleprompter, that you don't know what I'm going to say, and also that you haven't spent the whole commercial break thinking about how you're going to answer it. So for everyone listening, I'll pretend you don't know. But, you know, you're 40 In actuality, now, dear, first kidding. of all, in actuality, uh, during this hour, I don't know what you're going to say. In uh, fact, it's the only time that I do the show that I don't know what the caller's going to say. Uh, all I, uh, can I get to my point? All I No. You'll get to it when I'm ready to let you get to it. Oh, uh, that's right. You're so, you're all so all I know anymore. about you is that you hate me, and I don't really know how you're going to express it or what you're going to say. So understand that even though you think that I know what you're going to say, that's true in every other hour of the show but this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you done? Okay. Since you're so happy, why are you so fat? You must eat to the point of gluttony. I can eat whatever I want, dear. Yeah, but I thought you're so happy. Why I am. Food make I'm thrilled. Happy? Are you a psychiatrist? I'm not going to answer anything about So you're not a psychiatrist you. or a psychologist. You've got no credentials. And you're really I not in a position. You're really, you're really not in a board. position to be analyzing anybody. Actually, I do. And you can look me up with the state board that I am well, even, even Well, okay, I'll look up Sandra, and I'll see uh, where you're licensed. That's great. And uh, by the way, I might add it would be uh, a violation of your ethics to be analyzing anybody you hadn't met or been treating personally. Isn't that true? You don't know, no, actually, that's Actually, not. that is Why true. And if, and by the way, if you were you a psychologist or a psychiatrist, you would know that that's true. Are you going to stick on a topic about why you have to eat to be happy? Oh, if you're going to repeat the same thing over and over, Are you going to I'm going to move on. I already answered your question, darling. one 800 800 Tom. We're talking only to the haters this hour. This is Vic. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, you know who was calling? I kind of mentioned that I installed your uh, satellite dish about a few, a few years back. Oh, uh, I've had a number of satellite dishes. I don't know uh, about which uh, satellite dish you installed or what year you did it. I don't know. Yeah, you're in uh, Pasadena, right? I was. Uh, no, I'm not. About... Oh, were you in Pasadena at what point? That area? No. No. Okay, I do remember installing a Tom Likas uh, 
you mentioned, you know. I have like never, it. ever lived in Pasadena. I have not lived in Altadena. I've not lived in Eagle Rock. I have not lived in San Marino. I've not lived in Whittier. So that wasn't you when I installed the dish? Because the, the guy I met, uh, Tom Likas was his name, and uh, he mentioned that, you know, I'm Tom Likas, and I didn't know who, who he was at the time, um, who you were at the time, so... He, well, clearly, I mean, it's somebody who was trying to pass himself off as me, because anybody who is a regular listener to this show knows I live in the Hollywood Hills, and I have lived the same house for 10 years. 10 years, huh? Do you have another place you... Not, why, why? Now, let me ask you a question, uh, wise guy. Um, if I lived in the Hollywood Hills, what would I do? Get myself a pita terre out there in Pasadena? I'd get a little vacation a condo in Pasadena? Why would someone who lives in the Hollywood Hills want a second home in Pasadena? I don't know, but uh, the, the Tom Lake assignment said I'm a personality on the radio. I don't you know, care what I don't care I what he said. I don't. And by the way, I, now I know it's not me because I never tell people what I do for a living ever. Yeah. Ever. Well, anyway, Tom, I just wanted to confirm that because it's always uh, bugged me because I didn't know who Tom Likas was at the time. And well, I you met an imposter because I have never lived in Pasadena. I have never lived in that area code, as a matter of fact. Okay. Um, again, I, I remember the guy saying I'm a I don't care radio. what he said. So what? <laughs> well, All I right, and I'm the well, king of England. So you... what? So anybody can say anything. Did you see the man's ID? Did you see his birth certificate, his passport, his driver's license? Uh, did you uh, did, did you see his bank accounts? Uh, did you see any uh, personal markings? Uh, uh, do you know anything about him? Well, if there's a way I can see how you look, I'll figure it out because I know the guy, who, how he looks. And all I wanted to say is I listened to your show for the last couple of months, and um, I think you, you just make it out to how you see it in life. Uh, well, what am I supposed young, to do, give your opinion? I call you dad. Is this, is, uh, this the Vic, is this the Vic show? Am I supposed to be giving your opinion on the air or my own? No, it's just I, I see you have a lot of youngsters confused in life, and it's going to cost them down the line when, when you mention about, you know, no kids and treating women this way. How's it going to cost them? How's it going to, I mean, because they're going to get laid all the time, they're not going to be paying any child support, they're going to be taking well, trips be, to Tuscany be, like that me? That could be a possibility in life whenever, but look at you, you know, you're, you're, you're single, uh, no kids. Love it. a few times, as I heard. Well, I've divorced you know. four times, and uh, the last time, best thing I ever did for myself, and now I'm off to Tuscany in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not a happy ending. I, oh, yeah, it's not a happy you ending. I'm sure, life. I'm sure the man who liked my show would hate to be getting on the plane with me and flying to Tuscany and then going off to Rome for five days. I'm, I'm sure they'd hate it. Well, how miserable am I? You know what I need? I need to be living in a tract home in some place like Arlita. And then when, or Arlita or perhaps, uh, Panorama City. And then what I need is I need to have five kids. I need to shop at BJ's. And get my beach nut baby food and pallets. And then what I need is that every time I have a vacation, what do I have to look forward to? Disney World, Legoland, Knott's Berry Farm. Very exciting. Instead of going to Tuscany and Rome and Bordeaux, France and Barcelona, Spain, I should be going to places like that where I'd be truly happy. All right, well, you know, it's a waste for, the, for these young guys. Having Vic coming in and installing my satellite dish in my place in Pasadena. Well, you know, I, I, do you have a? Are you bald, by the way? No. You have a full head of hair. Pal, what does this have to do with anything? Because <laughs> uh, I have a feeling it was you and. Uh, Pal, you I, I'm telling you point blank. It's, Anyone who listens to the show, me, buddy, it's the first time I'm calling. Well, I, I, I got there. you to call in, but didn't I? I? Yeah, you're exactly. listening, looking you're calling for, looking, in. Looking for the haters. And, and, uh, and but the thing is, here you are, a hater, and you're, li you listen. Nobody. Well, you listen all the time. I'm the nobody that you no, listen to. Now, think to about this. I'm, an, I'm a nobody, and you listen to me. So what does that make you? Well, see, the thing is, I heard you on someone's radio uh, in the car, and, and I, I, I mentioned, hey, I installed this guy's satellite dish. What is this guy talking about? Mm. When I first found out about you after I installed your dish, a buddy of mine. But you now, never installed my dish. Do you hear me? Never. You have direct TV, don't you? Uh, it, most well, people, most people with a satellite dish have direct TV. So what? Yeah, well, you know, I'll tell you. I have never, you, you ever, should, you should ever. I should be more honest with people. What? All right, I, I'll cop. I live in Pasadena. I mean, please. I should be more honest with people. You you should be more careful believing what people say. Because when somebody yeah, well, says, I'm Tom Likas. You mentioned you own a lot of properties. It could be one of your properties. I don't own a lot of properties. I own, I own one house. That's it. 
Okay. That's a fact. And by the way, uh, ownership of property is a matter of public record. Why don't you search me out? Why don't you don't see how many do properties I, I not, own? If you're that you, sure yeah, that you're do right, why don't you check? The, it, Basically, I was just calling to say what's up. You know, I no, you were not. Dish. You're not. No, you never installed my dish. You've never met me. All You've right, never Tom, been to my house, you and you don't know where I live. Whatever you say, Tom. For all the people listening, Tom is not. Oh, Jesus. There, that's an example of the kind of person who hates me. A total idiot. <laughs> Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Even though you've got many issues with me, you continue to listen. Isn't that sick? Yes. It's like bottleneckers on the freeway. What's going on with my stupid uh, waste of time? It's rubberneckers. Whatever. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. In case you're just tuning in, we do this only every now and then. An hour of people who call in who hate the show, hate me, hate what I stand for, hate the callers, hate the concept, the things we believe in. The whole thing just makes you pissed off. By the way, there was a caller who said, you can't win in a match with me. And he hung up. Chicken. Coward. Complete pussy, Dean. You're absolutely right. <laughs> you could beat me in a fight. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And uh, we're talking only to the haters. The lovers can sit on the sidelines for this hour, so we freed up all the phone lines just for the haters. If that's you, call me now at 1-800-5800-TOM. Are you ready? Here we go. Mariana on the, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. I hate your guts. You hate my guts. Like, literally with a passion. Tell me why. Because you're a chump, and all your all your followers are chumps too. Like you make no sense. Give me an example. Like when you say that guys shoot, like like that. I I heard you when you were talking about like if a girl gets pregnant, like after just make her get an abortion and then take her home and buy her like a like a breakfast in McDonald's and then oh you buy her an egg McMuffin, yes. Yeah, yeah, whatever. That's so stupid. Just because she got pregnant, what you guys can't use rubbers or something? Like you make no sense, and you're a sexist pig, honestly. It, well, it, actually, dear, it doesn't matter whether you use a rubber or not. Sometimes rubbers don't work. Well, whose fault is that? Uh, it, is that the girl's fault? Is that why does, he it doesn't does it matter? I, it, by the way, if a girl agrees to get an abortion, whose fault is that? Well, it's both of their faults. So you know, you, but why should like the guy dump her? That's stupid. Because if she uh, g- if she threatens, so, I'm going to no tell you. Well, you want to know why? I'm going to tell you. Because if she threatened to have that baby, that means uh, she will do it again. And uh, these she guys will do it will, again. Yeah, if she'll it was do it an again. An accident? How can she do it again? Because she could have another accident. So you're bl- it's not like she had the accident. Both of them had the accident. No, no. Yes, she, no. yes, yes. No, yes. because the fact is that she gets to decide whether or not a baby is born. And so what the guy needs to do is convince her all the good reasons not to have a baby. What if she had? Oh, man, that, that makes no sense to me. It's stupid. So like, when did you have your baby? What happened? When did you have your baby? I've never had a baby. I've never been pregnant. Oh, but if you are, oh. you'll have the baby, right? Probably. Oh, well, that's my point. That's why I'm telling the guys how to get you to have an abortion. Well, there's nothing wrong with the abortion. What I don't agree with is like the dumping her ass. That's stupid. No, there's nothing stupid about it. I think it's stupid. I think you're a chump. Well, you can say that all you like. That's the only reason? Hello? Is that the only reason you think that? No. Uh, like, I don't know. Just like all this. I don't listen to you that much, but every time I listen to you, like, it just makes no sense to me. It's just, it's just stupid. No, 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 it makes you're perfect sense. You're a 50 year old loser who's alone, and the only thing you have to, like, you have darling, to. Darling, darling, I am not alone. Money. I live you're, alone. But, yeah, but you're still alone. And the only people. I choose, like to, uh, dear, money. I choose to be alone. 
Yeah, because people, the only reason like people like it is because they have money. Well, the, some women, the only reason guys are with them is because they got big breasts. So what? Some that's women, the true. only reason guys that's are with them is because they put, oh, I'm sure it's not guys. true in your case. That's just some guys, not all the guys that, the, the, you know. Not, no, that's not some guys are with you because you put out some guys uh, uh, blonde hair. I don't have blonde hair. That's not the point. The point I'm making, dear, is that uh, people choose very shallow reasons for being with the people they're with. I don't care if it's my money or yeah. I don't care if it, what it is. I and couldn't care less. You're proud of Absolutely. Money. My money is an accomplishment. My money is the representation of a lifetime of work that I'm proud of, a lifetime of accomplishment. You bet. If people want to be with me because I'm an accomplished what? individual, that's fantastic. That's I think it's great. You guys think it's great, but it's better that somebody. And by the sad? way, it's even more doesn't of a compliment. It's even home. more of a compliment that somebody wants to be with you because of your money and your accomplishments than that they want to be with you because of the way you look, which is something you really have no control over. You are pretty much born with what you have. Uh, I would much rather somebody want to be with me for who I am and what kind of accomplishments I've had. And money is a representation of the accomplishments I've had. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear a word you said. All right, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Get a new hearing aid, darling. Oh, look, that little chicken, that little pussy, uh, Parker, has called back. I guess he drank some liquid courage or smoked a bong or something and called back in. Hello? Hey, Tom, how's it going? Just great. Hey, uh, my main complaint with uh, you as uh, an argue mentative person, I guess. An argumentative person. It's not a real word. It's not a real word. Uh, I know, Tom. You're anyway, already starting off uh, at a deficit here. Thank you. I appreciate it. My main problem is that whenever someone gets into an argument with you, whenever it turns into a shouting match, the first thing you do is you automatically cut them off, you make your point, and then you put them back on, and then you get back into a shouting match, cut them off again. Are you a program going. director? What? Are you a radio program director? Are you a programming executive? Uh, do you have the ability to shut off people who are talking to you? I on have the, the ability to shut off anything that happens on this program. You bet I do. Well, look at that. That's what you do to win your arguments, buddy. You just said it right there. I haven't shut you off. There you are. Go ahead. Yeah. Prove how prove how awful I am. Go ahead. I'm merely proving the point. You're proving nothing. You never win an argument. You are proving you nothing. When people call this show and don't want to engage in a dialogue, they just want to call up and rant and rave without any interaction with me, I will, yes, I will put them on hold and I will make my point and then bring them back when I'm finished making my point and then I let them make their next point. That is how I do it and that's how a professional broadcaster does it. You wouldn't know anything about that because you'd have no experience in this area, but I guess you needed to call it a B-school about how it works. All right. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. I know. Anyway, Tom. Uh, so I thought you were going to call in and win here. I'm really trying to prove the point. What point? You... Don't repeat what you just said. You, you, We already heard what you said. I know. It's very Don't... bad form. I'm going to tell you how to do radio now. It's very bad form to repeat what you just said. Say it and then move on to your next point. All right. I'll take that in the future, Tom. Great. You collapse like a house of cards, as I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to beat you in an argument. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Heidi on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great. I was just wondering when you're going to uh, come out of the closet. When I'm going to come out of the closet? When you're going to come out of the closet. Well, dear, dear, dear you, never complained, you never complained about me when I did you. I'll tell you that. You were begging for more. Yeah, you were all that, weren't you, then? Yes, I was. Oh, my goodness. Your ass hasn't recovered. It's still black and blue. <laughs> you would know about asses, wouldn't you, Tom? I know about your ass, darling. Oh, I don't think so. It was so easily gettable. So, so when's the last time? Having to take a drive. Now, dear, again, dear, you can't use that kind of language on the air. It's illegal, and I'm not, not kidding. Not hard or dry. And again, thank you, 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, you're not going to win an argument by calling up and using vulgar language on the air. That's not going to work. You're not going to win an argument that way, and we're not going to let you do it. Teresa, on the Tom Like His Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I think that you have no respect for women at all, whatsoever. You just treat them like a piece of meat. Well, I'll tell you the truth. I have no respect for anybody as a group, men, women, or anybody as a group. Respect is something that is earned. 
by each individual. And I do not walk into meeting somebody respecting them immediately. I have no opinion about them and certainly no respect for them until I see a reason to respect them. Do you have a sister? I have two. So what do you think about your show? What do I, well, I... What do they think about your show? I really don't know. Why don't you ask them? Have they, have they ever tell you or talk to you about, about my show? show? Or what no. you think about women? I mean, dar darling, what I think about women, frankly, is, is very specific. And that is, when I talk about women on this show, I'm primarily talking about the women that I would want to date or that I have dated. And the women that I don't particularly care to date. Have you dated any Asian women? I have. What do you think of them? I don't have an opinion about them as a whole. My God, Asia's a big place. I've dated women from India. I've dated women from Korea. I've dated women from Japan. I've dated women from the Philippines. I've dated women from... Uh, what about Chinese? Yes, I have dated Chinese, as a matter of fact. What do you think of Chinese? Depends on the woman. Okay, you think they're out for money? Do I think Chinese women are out for money? I, I mean, in general, do you I don't think, think I don't think I don't think any group of all women is out for money. Attractive women are out for money. But uh, you've been talking them women just up from money. They just want to attractive women. Yes, they they want to sell to the highest bidder in most cases. So I don't agree with you. Why not? Are you a nine or a ten, dear? I'm sorry. Are you a nine or a ten on a scale of one to ten? No. All right. So how would you know? Because I've been listening to your show. Oh, right, but it's a you, my God, a woman who's not that attractive like you probably is not a gold digger. I guess you have never met any women with quality. What does if that mean, quality? You have had bad What does that mean, quality? Women with quality. What does that mean? With show some respect. What, what, what do you mean by women of quality? I, I, I'd like quality to know what that means. women. What does that mean? We just want to date somebody or just sleep with somebody, have a one night stand, and that's it. Well, no, I'll take. Well, you can't use that language on the air, dear. I don't care what country you're from. That's a, that's a vulgarity you can't use on the air. And you know what word that was. Fact is that uh, when I go dating, I go dating to get laid. That's the purpose of it. End of story. And uh, I want to date women who are attractive. And I'm, I'm not dating women in order to discuss politics with them or to discuss their opinions about the war in Iraq. I really couldn't care less. That's not what dating is for. I think you really have some bad experience in the past. Every man has... So that's what makes you become the man you are right now. But you know what? Everybody's experience is what makes them the person they are today. Everyone's. So I, to me, it's like you just have. So you've had nothing but. So let me understand, dear. You've had nothing. You have had nothing but great experiences with every man you've been with. They've all been great, right? More or less. More or less. That means they haven't all been great. No one's perfect. Well, there you go. So you've had bad experiences with men, and that's why you are the bitter 35-year-old that you are. Are you married? You What's your husband's name? Them? No, what I'm is, not. What, you're not married? Well, I'm not surprised. You're 35, unmarried, bitter. I, I choose not to get married. Well, I choose not to also. There you go. But you must choose not to get married because of the bitter experiences you've had with men in the past. Uh -uh. Nope, not at all. Oh, then why do you choose not to be married? I like to be to stay single and have fun. Ah, uh, I see. Not because I have some bad But if you're not that attractive, how much fun are you having? Talk about man. But if you're not that attractive, how much fun are you having? Really? Yeah, I'm asking you. So you think that women who are single are not attractive? I think women who are 35, unmarried, and bitterly calling radio talk shows are, are you probably, think about it, probably a little bitter, probably a little angry. <laughs> Very funny, Tom. So yeah. you think that women just up for money? They just want to... Oh, no, only attractive women, dear, but no, certainly not you. Right. You think that women just want to go out with you and spend a night with you? Or, or let's say you talk about men who has been dating and they had girlfriends or lovers. They just want the boyfriend or the lover to take them out. Or only the attractive on ones, darling. Only the, attra only the attractive ones. The only the attractive you, ones. I would take you out for dinner. And I'll pay for your dinner. Really? Really. But are you attractive? It all depends. <laughs> I'd love to know what that depends on. <laughs>
Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.